my Adore, my 64, my Commodore 64. Hi there, and welcome to a Let's Type episode from the Commodore 64 Appreciation Society. This is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine, and then when I finish typing it in, I play it. I'm a big fan of machine language games. They might not be quite as much fun to type in, but you can't deny how much better they play compared to games written entirely in BASIC. Some of my favorite type-ins fall into that category. Crown Quest is a recent example, and so is Flash Flood. With just a bit more polish, I honestly think both could have done well as full commercial releases. Today's game is another machine language entry, and it looks like a good one. It's called Richtofen's Revenge, published in Compute's first book of Commodore 64 games back in 1983. And let me tell you, it's a doozy. The code fills 13 pages in the book. That's a lot of numbers to type. But that's fine by us here at the Appreciation Society. We love typing in programs, and the results are always worth it. Oh, and speaking of which, if you enjoy these type-in videos, there are plenty more. I've added a link to the full playlist down in the description. So without further ado, let's put on some music, grab a cup of coffee, and get typing. Before I can start typing in Richtofen's Revenge, I first need to enter MLX, which was Compute's machine code entry and proofreading program. Some of you might remember that I already typed in a version of MLX when I did Crown Quest in an earlier video, and those people might be wondering why I'm doing it again. Well, it's not actually the same program. Crown Quest required MLX 2, while Richtofen's Revenge is a much earlier release, about 7 years older, and it needs the original MLX. I haven't typed that one in yet, so here we go. MLX first appeared in December 1983, and it was surprisingly advanced for its time. It provided a full environment for entering machine code, along with built-in proofreading. According to Compute, during extensive testing, not a single person mistyped a machine language program, <laughs> which tells me they clearly didn't test it on me. A couple of years later, the second version, MLX2, improved the error checking even further and switched from three-digit decimal numbers to hexadecimal, which made entering programs much faster and more efficient. But for now, the original MLX will do just fine. And as I prepare to dive into 13 pages of machine code, I'll take all the proofreading help I can get. I managed to get MLX entered and running without too much trouble. Just a couple minor hiccups that were easy enough to find and fix. So now it's time to start typing in Richtofen's Revenge. Before we can do that though, Compute asks us to enter this line of code. I don't think I've ever seen this exact setup before. The first part, poke44,23, moves the starting point of BASIC from memory location 2049 to 2071, nudging it up by 22 bytes. The second poke clears a specific memory location to make sure everything's clean before restarting BASIC with new. They likely did this to reserve a small chunk of low memory for the machine language routines that MLX will be entering later, so the new code doesn't overlap or collide with BASIC. It's a neat little trick, and a reminder that Compute's editors really knew their way around the 64. Richtofen's Revenge was written by Chris Metcalf and Mark Sugiyama. We haven't come across them yet on this channel, but this is actually the second program they wrote for Compute. Their first was a really cool application called Music Master, which appeared in the June 1983 issue. I actually typed that one in before starting the channel, so there's no video for it, but if you'd like to try it yourself, the program, along with many of my other type-ins, is available to download at GamingAlexandria.com, a fantastic site dedicated to preserving video game history. With their experience from Music Master, it's clear Metcalf and Sugiyama knew their way around the 64 SID chip, so I'm expecting some good music and sound effects in Richtofen's Revenge. Compute didn't publish any screenshots of Richtofen's Revenge, so I really don't know what to expect. I do have a general idea though, based on the description. It sounds like an arcade style shoot 'em up. In the game, we take on the role of an ace World War I pilot, out to defeat the airborne hordes of the dreaded Red Baron himself, Manfred von Richtofen. He's unleashed his forces, and we are the last line of defense against an all-out invasion of our country. That's quite the premise, and honestly, that feels like we're putting a lot of pressure on this poor pilot. Especially considering that the game doesn't actually end. 
The waves of enemies just keep coming, getting larger and larger. To make matters worse, our plane slows down as the battle drags on. We start out as the fastest aircraft in the sky, but as time goes on, we gradually slow down until we're basically the same speed as the enemy planes. These are interesting game mechanics, but uh, it does kind of sound like Richthofen's victory is inevitable. Still, if we're going down, we might as well take as many of them with us as possible. As I'm typing out all these numbers, it's becoming clear that MLX has a small quirk. Sometimes a few leftover numbers stick around after using the delete function. Thinking back, I know exactly where in the code the issue comes from. The way the line wrapped on the page made it a bit ambiguous. Should I have added a space or not? I didn't, but obviously I should have. But hey, even the Red Baron had off days, right? Anyway, it doesn't seem to be causing any problems with the data entry itself, but I've made a note of it and I'll fix it after I finish typing. Compute's first book, of Commodore 64 games, is mostly a collection of titles that had already appeared in the magazine. If you've been following the series, you'll recognize names like Blockhead, Rats, and Goblin. But there are a few exclusives that weren't in the magazine, including Richtofen's Revenge. There are also two other machine language games, Munch Maze and Zweeter Z, also by Mark Sugiyama, that appear to be book-only releases. From a business standpoint, this makes perfect sense. Compute couldn't exactly sell a book full of stuff everyone already had. I'm finally reaching the end of the code. This one's been a long haul, probably two or three hours in total. Or as I like to call it, a great way to spend an afternoon. From what I can see, MLX's proofreading has worked perfectly, but that doesn't mean I'm not a little nervous about having made a mistake somewhere. I still feel the trauma from childhood, spending hours typing a long program only to have it fail at the end. Uh-oh, this doesn't look great. MLX thinks I'm done, but there's actually one line left in the listing. Fortunately, it's just zeros, so hopefully this won't be a problem, but that's nerve-wracking. At least if it fails, we can say the Red Baron got one last laugh. Either way, fingers crossed. Okay, it's saved. On disk, Richtofen's Revenge takes up 15 blocks, just under 4k. That seems remarkably small for 13 pages in numbers, but keep two things in mind. First, machine code is extremely compact compared to BASIC. A program with roughly the same capabilities in BASIC would probably need 5 to 10 times more disk space. Second, entering three-digit decimal numbers instead of hexadecimal, like we did here, is much less efficient. Had this been entered using hex, we could expect almost a 50% reduction in the amount of data we'd need to type. Okay, enough delaying. Let's go. And hey, it works. I love the rendition of that classic war song over there. Good music in Typins was a bit of a rarity, so this is a nice addition for sure. But also, what's the deal with the text? It's obviously supposed to be white, but the last letters are basically unreadable. That seems odd, and I'll look into it further. Also, speaking of fonts, one of my viewers pointed out that it looks very close to the one used in Blue Max. Take a look, they are identical, or at least exceptionally close. Okay, let's get this thing going. Cool, so here's my plane. It has soft with camel vibes. Movement is quite smooth and the fire button is very responsive. Oh, <laughs> I guess you can't crash into a house. That makes sense. The enemies are pretty interesting. There are a couple of types of aircraft. The blue-green planes always fly west and the gray ones always fly east. And those bouncing white things? <laughs> Oops. Anyway, those bouncing white things? Surveillance balloons, and man are they erratic. Another thing I've noticed is that the enemies don't seem to be using sprites. The way they jump around makes me think the game is using character graphics instead. That actually makes sense. The instructions include a table showing how many enemies can appear on each level, and by level 36, that number reaches 64. Even with clever multiplexing, that's more sprites than the 64 can comfortably handle, so character graphics are a smart solution. Oh, nice. 
And what a fun little tune after clearing the level. The multi-register music sounds fantastic. These levels are starting to get tough. The opening section of each is by far the most hectic, and finding open space can be tricky. You also have to watch out for shrapnel, so things get cluttered quickly. <laughs> uh oh. The level has to be completely cleared in order to progress. Since some planes move left and others move right, you might have to scan the entire level in both directions to find them all. I'm really glad there's no timer here. Now that I've been playing for a bit, this is starting to actually feel a bit like a World War I version of Power Wash Simulator. Your goal is basically to clean everything from the level. Of course, in Power Wash Simulator you don't have to worry about enemy bullets or flying shrapnel, but you get the idea. <laughs> well there goes another one. Man, these later levels get tough. The programmers did a great job of getting so many enemies onto each one. <laughs> uh oh, down to my last life. Oh no, holy cow, that happened fast. <laughs> well, if you're going to go out in flames, there may as well at least be good music. Well, that was a lot of fun. I wish it told me what level I was on, but that's about the only knock on the game I can come up with. It's exactly what you'd expect from an arcade shooter like this. Now, there are a couple other things that I want to check out, but before I do that, I'm going to see if I can figure out this font thing. Well, isn't this interesting? I did some digging on Richtofen's Revenge, and sure enough, the screenshots I found online show the same problem with the text, so it's definitely something in the code, not a mistake. That's a relief. But check this out, it's working now. Or is it? So I discovered that the color of that last character is actually determined by whatever text color you have set when the program runs. So if my text is light blue, the 64's default, the characters appear light blue. When I typed run in yellow, the last character showed up in yellow. I totally stumbled on this by accident. I switched the text color to white to make it more readable for the video and suddenly everything worked. I stared at the screen in disbelief for a few seconds and then it clicked. What a bizarre glitch. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it and for the life of me, I have no idea why it only affects the last letter. You'd think the programmers would just set the color for the whole line and call it a day. At least now we know how to fix the problem. So with that solved, let's jump back into the game and check out a final couple of things. While playing, pressing F3 mutes the engine noise but keeps other sounds, like shooting, intact. That's a neat little option, though I think I prefer it with the engine on. And then pressing F1 takes us back to the main menu where we can now actually see the level selector. I'm cranking it all the way up to 30 to see how it plays with 56 enemies. <laughs> what a mess. This is really challenging. There's a ton going on here. The biggest hazard is definitely the explosions you need to avoid. And because I'm roughly now the same speed as the other planes, dodging them is much trickier. This is a really fun game. Mopping up the final few enemies is definitely my favorite part. Overall, this has been a fantastic program to type out and play. It's quite simple, exactly what you'd expect from a 4K type-in from 1983, but it delivers the kind of arcade action that was common back then. The fact that they managed to include so many enemies and have everything work flawlessly is really impressive. Well, flawlessly as long as you first set the text to white. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any memories of Richtofen's Revenge, Compute's first book of Commodore 64 games, or anything else you'd like to share, drop them in the comments. Hope to see you again.